winning three games in a row, scoring 11 goals in the process, Manchester United's start under Eric Ten Hag was nothing less than brilliant. But in the latter stages of pre-season, our form has really fallen off a cliff and that culminated with today's 1-1 draw against Real Vallecano. However, in today's game, was the draw a fair result or should we have gotten more from this game? Well, let's discuss this in the 5 things we learnt in Manchester United's 1-1 draw against Real Vallecano. But starting off, let's start off with that performance as in today's game, in a sold out Old Trafford, as you already know, Manchester United drew 1-1 against Real Vallecano. But despite the fact that Manchester United actually lost our last game against Atletico Madrid, I think today's game against Real Vallecano, I think this might be the worst performance we've seen so far. But Pav, how can that be the case? Well, as I told you for the Atletico Madrid game, I think we actually played quite well in that game. And with the sheer amount of chances we had in that game, with me saying we arguably had four big chances, on another day, if we convert those four big chances, Manchester United have a routine victory. Thus, with the performance we did have today against Real Vallecano, I think these performances right here were polar opposites. And therefore, in today's game, I think the 1-1 draw against Vallecano is probably a fair result. As if we talk about their performance, as in today's game, Manchester United simply did not get going. From minute 1 to minute 90, the tempo was not really there. We struggled to play out from the back. Manchester United struggled to control the game. We couldn't dominate the game. Thus, we couldn't sustain pressure on Relacano. And with this being a poor side, Manchester United simply did not create enough chances to win this game. But what could the reason be for that? Well, for me, the big reason is that these players simply haven't played enough together. As if we look at the starting 11 in today's game, where we had Heaton in goal, a back four of Laird, Varane, Martinez, Tellez, a midfield three of Garner, Van der Beek, Eriksen, and a front three of Chong, Garnacho, and Ronaldo. And with that lineup right there and the lineups we have been having in preseason, as you know, this is not our normal lineup. And as I said, I think the massive reason why Manchester United did play this bad is just the pure fact that these players have not played enough together, thus have not had enough training under Eric Ten Hag. However, out of this starting 11, were there some players that did play well? Well, they were, and I'm going to mention them in my second and third point. But with that being said, let's swiftly move on to that second point, and that being the performance of Lissandro Martinez. In the debut of Lissandro Martinez, i.e. the Butcher of Amsterdam, well, he really did not disappoint. As in today's game, we saw why Eric Ten Hag did pay £55 million for the centre-half. As on the ball, we saw why he is known as an elite ball-playing centre-back. With his calm presence on the ball, the press resistance, his elite passing range, but we also saw his defensive abilities in today's game. With his great positional awareness, his reading of the game, and even at times, we saw his no-nonsense defending, thus him being called the Butcher of Amsterdam. But what was Eric Ten Hag's thoughts of Lissandro Martinez? Well, he said, no surprise, I think it was a really good combination with him and Rafa. They played really solid. That was good to see. The question is always, how do you integrate him? And I think I can integrate him quite well into this team. And reiterating what Eric Ten Hag said there, I think Lissandro Martinez's performance was quite well. And I think Lissandro Martinez as that left-sided centre-half, I think that will be a good fit in this Manchester United. But moving on to another player that played well, and that being Alejandro Garnacho. It looks like in today's game it was all about Argentina for Manchester United, as the 18-year-old Argentine winger, i.e. Alejandro Garnacho, was also another brilliant performer. As in today's game, despite Garnacho being just 18 years old, he showed the complete performance of a winger for me. As if we look at his numbers, Garnacho completed 7 out of his 11 final third passes, won possession 7 times, had 6 touches in the opposition box, won 3 out of his 5 tackles, created 2 chances, and had 2 shots. 
Well, if you look at those stats right there, they do suggest that he did have the complete performance for attacker. And when you think about it, the fact that he is 18, if he continues to perform like he has performed in today's game, for me, there's no doubt if he does perform like this in the Europa League, for example. Well, if he does that, I think there's no doubt with the track record that Eric Tanaga has of promoting youth, there's no doubt for me that we will be seeing a lot more of Alejandro Garnacho. But as per usual, lads, let me know your thoughts on the performances of Alejandro Garnacho and Lissandro Martinez. But moving on to a player that did not play as well as them, and that being Cristiano Ronaldo. On Thursday night on Instagram, Cristiano Ronaldo posted that on Sunday the King will play and the King did play on Sunday as in today's game Cristiano Ronaldo did start as a striker. However, he did not perform like the likes of Garnacho and Martinez as in today's game Cristiano Ronaldo in the 45 minutes he did play, well he did not play to his usual standards as in today's game Ronaldo wasn't really involved in the game he wasn't pressing well he wasn't involved in the link up play as much and overall in the game Cristiano Ronaldo had zero shots on target and that just simply isn't Cristiano Ronaldo so what is wrong with him? well as you lot know it looks like Cristiano Ronaldo wants to leave us and it looks like he's that desperate to leave us that he is leaving before the game's even over as 15 minutes before the full time whistle, Cristiano Ronaldo was pictured leaving Old Trafford and for a player that played the first 45 minutes, I don't think it makes sense for him to be leaving Old Trafford before the game's even finished. But why did Ronaldo leave? Well, Manchester United don't know why Ronaldo left as according to Jamie Jackson, when it was put forward to Manchester United if he was allowed to leave, the club were unable to give clarification and with Ronaldo's agent i.e. Jorge Mendes moving mad in the transfer market. I think the fact that Ronaldo did leave before the full-time whistle, that suggests to me that the GOAT himself is not happy at Manchester United and really he wants to leave us as soon as possible. But moving on to the final talking point and that is the tour overall. In the first six games in Eric Tenag's regime, we started off with three wins in a row but shortly after, as I told you, that really all fell apart with Manchester United now in our last three games, having drawn two and lost one. But has this tour been a good one so far? Well, I wouldn't say good, but I'd say it's been okay now, as overall, the fact that Manchester United did have their worst ever season last year. No one expected Eric Ten Hag to win every single game in pre-season, but after the first three victories in a row, we probably did expect to get at least one more victory in the final three games, especially when you're versing teams like Aston Villa and Real Vallecano. But taking the results to a side, I think overall in pre-season, our performance levels have been quite good. And I think that is a major factor for pre-season, as for me in pre-season, results aren't number one and it's more about performance level. And the fact that in majority of the games, i.e. 5 out of the 6 games for me, Manchester United have played well, dominated those games and probably deserved to win 5 out of those 6 games. Well, if we continue that performance level into the Premier League, well, for me, the way that we have been playing in pre-season overall, well, for me, that is quite a positive sign. But with that being said, that was the 5 things we learned in Manchester United's 1-1 draw against Real Vallecano. And if you did enjoy the video or found it insightful in any way, shape, form, well you know what to do. Go down there and smash the like button for your boy. Consider subscribing to my channel. As I've told you before, we are now on the road to 1,500 subscribers. So any subscriber is massively appreciated. But anyways lads, for now guys, I'm out. Peace.